Do you believe in evolution? I believe in, uh, well, that, that's a, I believe in micro evolution. I believe that there are real evolutionary processes. I'm skeptical about what's called universal common descent, the idea that all living forms have evolved from one single common ancestor. I'm profoundly skeptical, skeptical about chemical evolution, the idea that the uh, non-living chemicals in a prebiotic ocean or prebiotic soup arrange themselves to form the first living cell. And I'm also skeptical about the creative power of the mutation selection mechanism, which as it happens, uh, so are many leading evolutionary biologists today. I attended a conference in 2016 at the Royal, convened by the Royal Society uh, in London, the Royal Society being the oldest and most august scientific body in the world. And it was con convened by a group of evolutionary biologists who were essentially dissatisfied with neo-Darwinism, the standard textbook theory that we learn in, uh, in all high school and college textbooks. And, and many of them were saying, we need a new theory of evolution. The first talk at that conference was given by Gerd Muller, a prominent Austrian evolutionary biologist. And he simply enumerated the five major, uh, what he called explanatory deficits of neo-Darwinism. And his basic perspective was the mutation selection mechanism does a good job of, of uh, optimizing or modifying pre-existing forms. Um, it can generate small-scale variation, but it does a very poor job of explaining the origin of those forms. Think about, for example, the Dar Darwin's finch beaks. Great job of explaining how variations in weather patterns result in changes in the shape and structure of the finch beaks. But that mechanism turns out not to do a good job of explaining the origin of birds or ma other ma major animal groups in the first place. So uh, modification, yes. Innovation, no. But so modification over massive amounts of time, don't you think that would eventually lead to new groups? Because mm -hmm. a lot of new groups have, they have similar origins, or at least origins from uh, one ancestor. Well, time, like primates. Was, yeah, time was always the hero of the plot. But l let me, the, the couple, let me just run okay. a, a couple of arguments by it, and let's see, see okay. what you think. Okay, and I, I developed these in a lot of detail in my book Darwin's Doubt. Um, uh, if we we uh, we now know, thanks to the genetic revolution, the, the molecular biological revolution, that if you want to build a new form of life, you have at least ha you have to have new code, because all all new forms of life depend upon uh, new anatomical, a fundamentally new type uh, type of animal, for example. Uh, so you need new anatomical structures from, but the new anatomical structures require new cell types. New types. So, if you got animals that first come on the line have, and they have they have a digestive system, they have a gut. Well, you got to have enzymes that can service a gut, that can process food. So, enzymes are types of proteins. Proteins are built from the informational code in DNA. So, anytime you want to get a new, it's just like in the computer world. If you want to give your computer a new function, you've got to provide new code. So, um, we have these long strings, these long digital bit strings. Uh, a, C's, G's, and T's. Not zeros and ones, but A, C's, G's, and T's in a, in, a, in, a, in a digital string. And we call that a gene. And if you have a, a section of DNA for building a protein, that's great, it all works. No, but if you want to build a fundamentally new form of life, you've got to have, you got to have new proteins to service the new cell types to build the new anatomical structures. Um, in our computer world, we know that if you start randomly changing the zeros and ones in a section of, genetic, in a section of digital code, you're going to degrade the function of that code long before you come up with a new string for making a new program or operating system. That the the functional sequences are what are they're called? They're highly isolated in what's called sequence space. You you, you can change a few things and still retain function, but after a very, a very few number of changes, you're going to degrade the function, and long before you come up with a new function. Now the Darwinian mechanism. Um, starts with the idea that there are random changes in those uh, in those digital bit strings, those sequences of A's, C's, G's, and T's. And based on our experience in the computer world, we would expect that random changes are going to again degrade those strings long before they're capable of building a new protein. And there's now a very compelling experimental evidence that that's true. There's an Israeli um, 
molecular biologist Dan Toffick. Unfortunately, he died fairly recently in a tragic accident. But he was doing uh, mutagenesis experiments on sequences of the, uh, on sequences of code for building specific proteins that folded into stable structures. They're actually called protein folds. And he found that between three and 15 mutations was enough uh, to degrade the thermodynamic stability of the protein structure that, that the, 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 the gene was making. And once you lose that thermodynamic stability, you, there's no, you have no uh, functional possibilities. Is there possibly an undiscovered mechanism for protecting against that that we're not aware of yet? Possibly, but there's numerous lines of evidence suggesting that you, that mutations are, are within limits, they're going, you can modify again, you can optimize a, an existing protein structure called a fold, but if you, t if you allow too many of those mutations, you're going to degrade. And long before you would get a fundamentally new protein structure, an, another protein fold. So that's, that's just one of many, I want to run one other argument by you that I think is very intuitive. Um, the, if you want to build, uh, it turns out that there are, are, um, there, there are structures or systems for building that are uh, very important for building new animal body plants. And they're called developmental gene regular, regulatory networks. They were, they were discovered at Caltech uh, by Eric Davidson and colleagues. Eric Davidson has also unfortunately recently passed away in the last few years. But what these are, what, what they discovered is that you not only have genes for building proteins, you have genes that are building, that for, for uh, constructing molecules that send signals that tell the genome when to express other parts of itself. So you've got, there's signaling molecules that are telling the genome when, when to turn this part or that part on in order to build the right proteins at the right time as new cells are going through cell division in the process of animal development. So if you go from one cell to two to four to eight to 16, etc., you've got to, and as so as you have a developing animal form, there, there are points in that trajectory where, where it's important to differentiate one type of cell from another and for certain types of cells, muscle cells.